What's up guys, we're back in Pilsen in 1980. Three guys in the Pilsen area chose to form a group to protect themselves from the harassment, the bullies, the robberies, all that stuff. They chose their colors to be white, red, and green. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise, like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should've seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling, six times failing I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe, trying to do right I got a mission, trying to give back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Wrong Strong. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know what you think. We have another episode of Gang Life today. If you are part of my crew, my familia, my raza, subanse la suburban. Let's put some gas in it because we're going back to Pilsen. We're going to go... Check these dudes out. In 1980, a big Mexican immigration, like flux, just, you know, a lot of people are coming from Mexico. And they were coming out here to work in the country, labor jobs. There was a lot of labor jobs in Chicago. So a lot of them were coming and staying in Chicago. My grandparents came in the 40s. That's when they came over. But there's always been a lot of work in Chicago, especially for labor jobs, because there's a lot of like big, big uh, warehouse companies like Brock's, Lakewood Fans. Uh, you, I mean, stuff that where they, they people have to work on the line, you know. And there's always been a lot of Mexican immigrants in Chicago. There's the whole South Side is all Mexicans, so there's 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 a lot, and it's been happening since like the 50s. You know, people have been coming up to to uh, Chicago. But they were facing a lot of discrimination by their own people. And this is, you see this a lot. You see this a lot in between us. Even when I did time here in, in Phoenix, I had to choose between, you know, uh, sitting with the, the guys that were born here and sitting with the guys that are from Mexico. And in my head, because in Chicago, you know, it's a little bit different. I was like, what's... It's the same thing. It's like you tell me to choose between my mom and my sister. You know what I mean? So it was like, it's a little crazy, man. I don't know why we do it to our own people, but it's always been happening. And, you know, even back in those days. So, you know, back in those days, the Mexican youth and the laborers were getting bullied and robbed. You know, they would wait for them to come out of work and they would be at the bar. And then they would like, you know, smash them and, and take their money. And that's, that's messed up, you know. And eventually shit got old and they all got together. And uh, on 17th of Racine, and they came up with the name La Raza. I like that name. The Raza, I got a couple boys there. They were La Raza and uh, you know, they, they have a, a huge hood over there in the back of the yards neighborhood, uh, Pilsen. They spread out. 
Uh, the last time I made the decision to, talk f to, to turn Folk Nation, that's a six point star. Just like the party people, the SDs, the Ambrose, those are, those are all folks. You know, they, they cock their, high, their hat to the right, they cross up to the right, they raise their, their uh, jogging pants on the right, you know. Everything that has to do with the right side. So, you know, um, that's what they decided. And, I mean, I want to say in the, in the 80s, man, the, the Raza went through so many wars because at the beginning when they first started, they started as a party crew just like party people. They, even, they were just together to protect themselves. They didn't even want to gang bang or have nothing to do with the gangs, but then the gangs kept, kept you know, messing with them, messing, them, messing with them, and they had to do what they had to do to survive, and that's how it is. I've seen it happen so many times. It's crazy because one of my subscribers was telling me how we used to go and mess with them on 58th and Hamlin all, all the time, and they eventually, you know, ended up turning uh, uh, kings because they hated us because we would go over there and just mess with them for no reason. And now, now that I'm older and he was telling me, I'm like, it makes sense. So like all these gangs that started as like little party crews that just wanted to have a good time and throw parties, you know, got pushed into this life that it's not for everybody. You know, the Raza fought several bloody ass wars with everybody. The Ambrose, party people. I mean, you name it, Tutu boys. But they still managed to uh, to grow into uh, uh, new areas in Chicago, like I said, and, you know, on the south side. Back of the yards, uh, they moved over there by Marquette Park. They have a couple of suburbs. Um, and they haven't lost much territory. I think after the research that I did, they only lost, I think it was one suburb of all the hoods that they opened. And they opened close to 9 or 10. And uh, it was due to, you know... Um, them being the only gang in that suburb, so the cops really like, you know, <laughs> put their full attention on them, and they got them out of there. So, you know, it, it's it's um, it's crazy because the 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 gang structure and how it works, uh, it's almost like they they push you to actually be a gang because if you're not part of them then they're you're their enemy and they cut they start to mess with you so much and then in that Pilsen area if you go back you know 1980s 19 you know even the 70s 70s on up the Pilsen area was was it wasn't it wasn't a a bad like horrible area but it wasn't a good area there was a lot of shootings a lot of gang activity a lot of drugs you know and and um uh, the main thing over there is gang banging, man. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. If you're not part of a gang, it's almost like crazy because then they ask you, who do you hang around with? Because it's so normal. But, you know, throughout the years, like I said, these, these dudes have, uh, it was the test of time and have kept growing. And, you know, now they're in different states. Uh, the Raza, you know, one of the key factors that actually helped La Raza when they first, first got started was that the gang units couldn't concentrate on them because they didn't know who was who. And since their gang paraphernalia, whatever you want to call it, like colors, signals, everything, they use the Mexican flag. They use the Mexican flag. They use, you know, the colors of the Mexican flag. They use the eagle they use all the stuff that some of us that are not gang members would call ourselves. You know how you say, I'm, I'm Raza, you know. So that's what helped them crucially in the first years of them expanding like that. Because the cops thought, just thought they were just, you know, Mexicans. Whatever. So it's it, it was crazy. But yeah, they they've, they've, they had a lot of, in the 1990s, they, they were... They were bringing in, they, they had some big connections in Mexico. And some of their members were, were key, key, you know, members that, you know, laid the ground down for a lot of that, that uh, work that started coming into Chicago in the 80s, man. And um, it's just, like I said, I, I share these stories to, you know, as a learning tool, information, maybe get a laugh, a smile. Uh, all that stuff. I'm not glamorizing the gangs. I'm not like, you know, giving them the credit and all this. But the thing is, is that it's part of history. It's part of Chicago. It's part of 
you know, the, the 90s, 80s, 70s, and, and, and today, this is why it's fucking crazy out there, and it's a madhouse, because it's not what it used to be, it's a different era, but this is history, this is La Raza, they've been running strong since 1972, they started independently, didn't need nobody, didn't have no beef with nobody, but just took care of business fast, they, they retaliated when they needed to, they are looked at as the lone wolf of the gang culture, La Raza, yeah. My name is JC, man, you know, don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live. If you live it right, one life is all you need. Stay your ass out of prison, stay your ass off of drugs, stay your ass out of gangs. Go to school, educate yourself, every day work to get better, you. Because you do not want to die one day and regret that you did not live your life to the fullest or educated yourself to the fullest. So, but don't listen to me, you know? What do I know? I only went to college for 17 years. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll catch you guys on the rebound.